Some people, they may envy you Follow you on Insta just to free you The way that go chat rubbish, chat rubbish Hey, hey, my beautiful dentists, how are you all doing today? As for me, I'm doing fantabulous, thanks for asking Welcome to another video So today, like I promised yesterday We are gonna be going deeper into the African culture, the Nigerian culture, the Yoruba culture to be specific. Cause we're gonna go into each tribe one by one by one by one. One by, okay, let me focus. I feel like this is part of why I can't be a teacher cause I play too damn much. Anyways, so I already spoke and gave intro about the Nigerian culture. I started from Africa and then to Nigeria and then now we're taking each Nigerian tribes going deep into the foundation. We're gonna be talking about the Yoruba people, the Yoruba tribe. The Yoruba tribe is the second largest tribe in Nigeria. So the Yoruba tribe is an ethnic group that resides in the southwest of Nigeria. Makes about 40 million people. Yeah, that's a lot. However, you can also some of them are also scattered all over the world like it can be found can be found in Cuba in Dominican Republic Trinidad and Tobago uh, Jamaica St. Luca Brazil and some more other places however the largest group the main origin of the Yoruba ethnic group is in Nigeria because honestly if you have asked me like a few years ago Oh, your Yoruba. What makes you Yoruba? I probably would be like, um, perhaps because I speak Yoruba and I'm from the southwest of Nigeria and we like to eat Amala. I, I had no idea what, how it started. What um, made us different from other tribes? Who is the Yoruba godfather? I really didn't know much the depth about my culture, the way of life of our ancestors, of our great grandfathers. So if you ever asked me my Yoruba history, I probably will have been like, um, if you ask me, I beg now who I go ask. Until one day I was <laughs> on this group on Facebook and people started talking about the fact that, oh, all you Christians are Muslims. You 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 are adopting other people's religion that is not your religion go back to how your your ancestor the religion of your ancestors and stuff like that especially there's a particular guy in that group that is always kind of like you know all those posts that you seem like they're yelling at you even though it's a post it's a written like you know how facebook poster and i'm like uncle please be coming down then i really got interested and i started to do my research and I started to talk to people and I was blown away. That's when I learned that being Yoruba is more than just saying I am Yoruba. Now the Asian mythology of Yoruba people is a major religion that according to the devotees is one of the oldest religion in the world and has still been practiced till today. And it has since brought forth new modified religion such as the Santaria in Cuba and Condobol in Brazil. Now there's so much to talk about with the Yoruba people, the Yoruba tribe, but let us take it way back from the beginning. The Yorubas has a myth on how they were created. Because as you remember, as I said in my previous videos about how Ileife, which, which is a city in um, Ocean State, is known as the spiritual home for the Yorubas and it is said that this is where life began for the Yoruba people. Now the Yoruba myth of creation completely disregards the Big Bang theory of how the world was created. The Yoruba myth stated that in the beginning then the universe only consisted of two elements the sky above and the water below. Like, it was believed that the chief god alone which is the same God that we know. Golan is called God in, in the Yoruba language. I don't understand why people shy away from it because they probably believe you're talking about it is probably promoting idolism. I disagree because it's part of who we are. It's how it all started. And me talking about it doesn't change anything. I'm a 
believer of God. I have a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. And me knowing all this information about my ancestors, or the origin of my culture started from, doesn't change that fact. Information is power. Even the Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And it is always said if you lack wisdom, seek understanding. So if I mention names like Obatala, um, Odudua, and all of these things in this video, I am not anyway promoting idolism. Anyways, so like I was saying in the beginning, the, the Yoruba mythology states that the universe was only made of the sky and the waters below. The chief god Olodumare ruled the sky and the god that said ruled the waters below. So Obatala which was a mini god. So Yorubas do believe besides god Olodumare there are mini gods. So these mini gods are usually called Orisha. They know them as spirits being. They believe that Orishas are spirits sent by God, Olodumare, for the guidance of all creation and of humanity in particular. To help humans to live successfully in Aye, Aye means Earth, while the Cubans call them Oricha, Brazilians call them Oriex or Erixa, I don't know how to say O-R-I-X-A, I don't know how to pronounce that, how they pronounce that. But it's still the same ideology, they are our Yoruba brothers that were scattered all over the world after um, the slave um, trade way back then, which we'll talk about later on. So anyways, so Obatala, which was one of the spirits, or one of the little gods, and I'll keep putting it in quote because I know there is only one God, I believe in only one God, right? Looked around and reflected on his environment, uh, his surroundings, and then he went to Elodumari, where to ask for permission to create a dry land for living creatures to inhabit. So Olodumari, either I would either call it Olodumari or Lorum, which is God in the Yoruba language, gave him the permission to go ahead. So he sought advice from Oromila. Oromila is known as um, kind of like the second hand of God. So the Yoruba knows, knows him as also a God of prophecy. He's also known as the spirit of wisdom among the Yorumoles. The Yorumoles are basically spirits. And sometimes people jokefully call him um, a second calabash to God since Igba Kejile Dumari means Igba means uh, Kalabash and also the Yoruba knows him as Eleni Queen, which means witness of fate. So anyways, Abatala sought Onomila's advice since obviously Onomila is known as the god of wisdom, right? On how to go about this mission. Onomila advised Obatala that to accomplish this mission, he's going to need a really, really, very long gold chain that will be able to reach below since they were all way above there, they were all in heaven, right? A snail shell filled with sand, a white hen, a black cat, palm, palm nuts, like P-A-L-M, palm nut, which he put all in his bag and carried on his shoulder. All the other spirit beings um, also contributed to whatever gold they had. When all was ready, Obatala hung the chain from the corner of the sky placed the bag over his shoulder and then started the downward climb. And so when he got to the end of the chain, he realized he still had some distances to go, but there was no more chain. So from above, he had Oromila advise him to pour the sand from the snail shell that he had in his bag and also immediately release the hen. So the hen upon landing on the sand began to scratch and scatter the sand everywhere. So wherever the sand is, um, scattered became dry land and wherever the hen also stepped on because of the sand on his feet became dry land. Now the bigger piles of sand became hills and the smaller piles became valleys. So Abatala jumped onto one of the hills and called it Ife which is the same Ife today. Now this dry land exceeded way beyond he could see. So what he did, he dug a hole in the ground and then planted one of the palm nuts that he brought and in a flash it grew and became a palm tree now the mature palm tree dropped more palm nuts on the ground which immediately matured into uh, a full-grown palm tree so the process kept repeating itself Obatala got tired I settled down with the cat because he had no other company except the black cat that he took with him 
So this was Obatala's routine every day. So after a few months, he got bored and decided to make um, human beings like himself to keep him company since he only was only him and the cat at this point. So he dug deep into the sound and found clay. So he, so he started on this task and started molding. But then after a while, he got tired and decided to take a break. So during his break, he decided to make palm wine from the palm trees nearby. And he kept drinking bowl after bowl after bowl, not knowing he was consuming alcohol. I love palm wine, by the way. Oh my God, the lesh. It's a night African fermented original organic wine non-processed because it's so delicious you can drink consume a lot of it without you realizing and before you know it it creeps up on you and you're drunk <laughs> anyways so Batala returned to his uh, task of um, fashioning these new figures but, but without him realizing that he was drunk he made a lot of imperfect figures and after he was done he called out to Olodumare to breathe a breath of life into them so the next day after he was no longer intoxicated, he realized what he had done and so never to drink again. So he decided to take care of these deformed beings. Hence why till today he's called the protector of the deformed. Now these new figures that had now new people that he created decided to also build huts. Like huts, H-U-T-S like the clay houses that was way popular way back then in the olden days i think they still have some villages back home that still have those clay huts they grew in numbers and soon ife became prosperous and became a city so hence they said ife is the spiritual home of the yoruba because that's where life started that's where the yorubas actually came from now all other gods all other spirit beings were happy with all what Obatala did and came to Ife to visit um, this city once in a while but there was only one person that wasn't happy about this which was um, Olokun remember Olokun was the ruler of the sea before Obatala decided to take over and make dry land so first of all for, my, for not consulting her before he decided to usurp her territory so one day Obatala returned home to heaven to visit so while he was gone Olokun Olokun is uh, the ruler of the, the sea Okun because Okun means basically in Yoruba language means sea Olokun decided to summon great waves waves upon waves upon waves of her vast ocean so wave after wave after wave she unleashed until the oh my god until the whole land was covered with, with water and many of the people were drowned so some people escaped to the highest land where they besieged the god Eshu. There are two kinds of Eshu. One is Satan, the devil, but Eshu in uh, the god Eshu in the Yoruba tribe or the Yoruba religion is different. I besieged him to please take a message to, because you know, he's one of the gods that comes to visit Ife after Obatala created it. So he was visiting this day and then they summoned him to beseech him to please take a message to Obatala or Elodumari to come save them from the flood. Now Eshu demanded that they uh, make a sacrifice to him and Obatala before he takes this message back to, to the sky. So people sacrificed some goats to him and Obatala so he went to the sky to deliver the message. So when Ormila heard about this news he climbed down the gold chain to earth and cast many spells which uh, caused the flood water to retreat and the African land reappeared again. And that's how the Yoruba people were created and um, in Ileife before everybody now started segregation happened and everybody now moved from Ife to where we now have Oyo and all of this other Yoruba land. 